Hello friends, welcome back to my little corner of the internet. My name is Sunny and I am here with another video. I like to talk about pretty much, I guess at this point, any and everything. <laughs> like there's no rhyme or reason to this channel. Um, it's just like a creative outlet. Uh, but mostly I like to focus on wellness overall, just like health and fitness and yoga, food. Um, and I think I mentioned yoga and also low waste living. So right now I'm going to be getting ready for a trip that I am taking to St. Louis. It's about two and a half hours from where I live. Um, I'm going to be doing some stretching while I chat. I figure I need to stretch because the car ride really makes my hips tight and my back tight. Um, and the best thing that I can do is to stretch beforehand and to stretch after my drive. So that's typically what I do and the stretches aren't too long it's about 15 to 20 minutes and I figured during that time I could be chatting with you all and sharing some unsolicited opinions and um and maybe if you are interested in having a 15 to 20 minute stretch as well totally informal you're welcome to join um it's not going to be a class per se I haven't released a yoga class video in over a year um for some just technological reasons and lack thereof. But if you want to stretch, you can unroll your mat or not use the mat. Like I said, it's completely informal, just doing this for fun. I'm going to be stretching anyway, and I figure I can make a little video about it and start talking about some topics that I find interesting. Um, and yeah, this might be like a new segment, a new little series, a little stretch and chat with Sunny. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, completely informal. So you can look at the screen and follow along, um, but I'm not going to be like guiding this at all. And if you don't want to follow along and just want to stretch as we chat, you're welcome to do that as well. Okay. So I think one of the reasons that I wanted to make this video is because, um, well, like I said, I'm getting in the car. I like to stretch beforehand, but also a topic, something happened a couple days ago, maybe more than a couple days ago. I learned about it a few days ago from my brother-in-law. If you are familiar with the Gina Rodriguez situation, you know what I am talking about. If you are not familiar, I will do a little just like overview. Um, Gina Rodriguez, she is somebody who, an actress, who has been in popular the popular show Jane the Virgin that just had its final season this year. And... I really liked her in that show. I really liked that show. She was also in that Netflix movie, um, Someone Great, that came out in the spring. And I love that movie. I've seen it like three times. I could watch it again. I think it's such a good film about relationships and about um, just women friendships. I love the female friendships in that movie. And it's always nice when you get to a movie with women who get to be as carefree as the movies we see with men. So I really really liked that movie. Um, and with that said, I liked Gina Rodriguez as a celebrity. I followed her on Instagram. Um, I thought that she was, I thought that she was enjoyable. Um, but I guess I'm not sure exactly when it happened because like I said, I just found out about it a couple of days ago. So it could be an older story. Um, she released a video on her story where she, um, was singing along to the uh, rap song by the Fijis and she sang the N-word. And it's not just that she sang the N-word, she, the way that she looked after she said it and how, which uh, line she decided to say in post, um, N-words give me the heebie-jeebies and just how she looked after saying it. It, it was super, it was really disappointing, I think is the the best way I can say it. Um, and then she released a, an apology that was really disingenuous. Um, it, was, it came off as really passive aggressive, petty, and like she was truly upset that people were calling her out for using the N-word and calling her out um, in general. And her apology was so whack. She then, after getting called out again, released a written apology that said the right things, but really came off as ingenuine. Like my issue is you're an actress, even if you don't believe that you're wrong, can't you act your way into an apology? Um, 
But yeah, so she, she released another apology. And from my understanding, it still hasn't been received well by people. Um, and yeah, she, like I said, is someone that I actually really enjoyed. However, I was talking to my brother-in-law about this two days ago and talking to my mom about it yesterday. And we got into some really great discussions about just race and um, why is it that people of color, non-black people of color, feel the need and desire to say the n-word um like here's the deal i believe that a lot of people say the n-word i believe that a lot of people say it behind closed doors um maybe in a joking way but also maybe not in a joking way um maybe not just around or singing along to rap lyrics or whatever i think people say it um a lot more than they're willing to admit so when she came out with that video and, and her response to it, it was surprising to me because I liked her as a celebrity, but also not surprising to me because of the culture that I grew up in and the society that we live in as a whole. Um, people of color who are non-black feel entitled to use that word. And also, I think it stems even deeper than that. I think that so many... Mm, I want to be like super careful of how I talk about this because for those who do not know I am black um, I identify as black my mother is black um, however I am biracial my I am mixed um, I'm half and half I'm half black and half Colombian my dad is Colombian and my mom is black so but I do experience or I do identify as a black woman and I think I navigate the world as a black woman um, and there is a, a reason for that um, so growing up, I, you know, I, I grew up knowing that people of Spanish descent would not necessarily consider me Colombian, right? Like a lot of Latinx people have an issue with Afro Hispanic people, people who identify, who come from black bloodlines, um, African bloodlines, even though they were born in like the Dominican or and they speak Spanish and their whole lineage is from that area in them. So it's not surprising to me that Gina Rodriguez said all of that. And I want to like clear, I'm trying to get this all out in a clear and concise way, but it's not coming out, I guess. Um, cause I don't want to I don't know, offend anyone, but I'm guess I mean, the people that I would be worried about offending probably aren't going to watch this anyway. So, um, the thing about, I think the experience of Afro Latinx people is a lot, well, it's minimized in the media. We don't see, um, very many people who identify or look dark-skinned who are Latinx in media, um, in movies, and mainstream. I mean, we know what her name, uh, Amara, I, I am blanking on her last name, but she's from one of the, like, I don't know, Love and Hip Hop shows or something. I, I know her. Um, I know Rosario Dawson identifies as a, um, I think she identifies as Black Latinx. Like, she is very open about her roots. Um, but for the most part, when we think of Latinx people, we think of women and men who are lighter skin. Um, their identity is acceptable, others not so much. And as somebody who is um, half Colombian, I can say that my experience has always been, I remember, I'll put it like this, I remember being a kid and being told by one of my cousins on my dad's side that I was a third Colombian, a third, not half, but a third. And I didn't really understand what that meant or why I was being told that. But in the end, it did come from the fact that I was biracial with black. Um, there was this belief in a lot of Hispanic and the Spanish culture that if you want to, that you want to better the race and you better your race by marrying white, light, lighter than you, so that your children can be lighter. 
Um, and it is something that is real. Uh, people experience it. And I think that the whole Gina Rodriguez thing is a is a part of a bigger issue. Um, she says that her dad is a dark skinned man. He is definitely not. <laughs> he's fairly light. Um, I mean, he's lighter than most of the family I have on my mom's side. Like he's a light. He's a light man. And I. I don't think that her anti-black rhetoric is necessarily intentional, but the reason that I have a problem with, with her and with everything that she's been saying lately is because she should learn. <laughs> like all of this, I mean, talk to people who don't look like you, find people, I mean, this world is huge. And I think that so many people of color who are non-black feel like they're so marginalized, which yes, for sure, um, there is marginalization in all of our communities, but they ignore the fact that, or maybe they just don't, I don't know if they ignore it, they don't want to see it, or if they're just oblivious to it, but that the people who are dark skinned in their communities are often ignored. Um, I mean, there's been videos of uh, Gina Rodriguez belittling even Yara Shabidi's experience as a as a black woman in an interview um and all this stuff equates to you know just not being able to recognize that somebody's experience could be different um and that you're not entitled to say whatever you want to say i don't know i i read something when i was in school that said that um colorism is the daughter of racism and I believe that wholeheartedly. I think a lot of lighter skinned people, a lot of lighter skinned people of color tend to completely belittle the experiences of, experiences of dark skinned people, tend to belittle the very real concerns that they have. Um, you know, it's cool for other cultures to adopt the black the black culture, black language, um, black dress even. It's cool to adopt it until it's time to stand up and, you know, fight for equal rights or um, whatever the case is. I don't know. It's really, it's sad. I was disappointed. Disappointed in her as a celebrity. And I'm not a huge fan of cancel culture. I really am not. I don't like the idea of canceling people because I think that human beings can learn and that we're all capable of learning. Um, we're all capable of doing better. I mean, there is stuff in my past that I'm not happy I said. There is stuff that I have changed the way that I think about. Um, I'm not the same person I was 10 years ago by any stretch of the imagination, but... I think that if people continuously point out to you that you're doing something that is hurtful or problematic and you do not change, that maybe you are not a good person. Maybe you're not somebody who I want to be looking up to. Um, and that's the thing. If somebody tells me that I hurt them, I try to acknowledge it um, and apologize without p placing blame and then change my actions. And that is how you know somebody is sorry. And I don't know if Gina Rodriguez is actually sorry or if she's just sorry that she's getting called out. Not even sorry she's getting called out. Upset that she's getting called out. Um, that second apology or that first apology video that she released really just showed that she was upset that people were calling her out. Um, and I mean, she even had, and I'm pretty much done stretching as you can see, but she had a luncheon where she uh, ha hosted her and someone else. Um, where she hosted a luncheon for the some Hispanic women in Hollywood and there was no one of Afro-Latinx uh, descent. You know, there was no one who was dark-skinned. There was no one who looked in that demographic. And um, she said that she invited them, but they didn't come. All of them didn't come. No one came and no one is admitting that they were invited to this or saying that, yeah, I got the invite, but I couldn't make it. It was just filled with women that we see in the media who is, you know, who we are 
kind of used to seeing as super um, beautiful and like that they are the representatives of all of Latin people and it's it's BS. Um, so that was like a little bit hard to read as a as a fan um, because we want the people that we like to do well. Like I, I was rooting for her and I'm not saying that I'm not. I don't wish anything bad on her. I don't care. Um, I hope that she learns from this and is able to move on. But based off history and based off her past, I don't think that she will. <laughs> That's not looking too good. Um, but yeah, as somebody who grew up in in the culture, but not in the culture, if you get what I mean, um, you know, being denied being in the culture, being told that I was only a third, it is interesting to me that... Um, It is interesting to me that people like Gina, people like JLo, who I do love, um, Cardi B, all of these, Fat Joe, um, all of these people, it's clear that they have a color issue but they don't, they don't know it. They don't recognize it. I don't know. That's a thought. Anyway, that's my little, my, what I've been thinking about for the past couple of days. What do you think about it? If you have any, um, you know, is, am I completely off base? Like, I don't think I am. <laughs> all right. Well, that is all I have today. Um, I'm about to pack up and get ready to go, but I just wanted to get on here, do a little bit of stretching. I hope that you like this and I hope that, um, yeah, I'll keep going with this. I kind of really enjoy the stretch and chats is cool. Um, it's a cool idea, I think, in the fact that I'm going to stretch anyway, so it might be fun to do it with others. Um, to know if you, what you think about the situation. Um, like I said, I'm not a part an, or a fan of cancel culture. I don't plan on like canceling her. I'm not following her anymore on Instagram or anything. Um, and Jane the Virgin is over, so I'm not going to like not watch episodes of that because it's already done. Um, but... I don't know. I hope that she learns. I hope that she grows from it. And do you think that she will? Do you think that, do you think that there is an issue, a larger issue? Because I do. There's a larger issue amongst people of color. I think being able to be a part of the culture, wanting to be a part of black culture, but then just definitely drawing a line when it comes to supporting black people and the black experience. Um, and this is coming from somebody who is of lighter skin but I am very aware of where I come from and um, and very pro-black, <laughs> like very, very much so. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you all think and I'll see you next time for another stretch and chat with Sunny. Uh, until then, go out and do some good for yourself and for others and just don't go out there being problematic. Let's stop that. All right, bye.